Kingwood Methodist Church. Hello, I'm Donna Smith, Director of Care Ministries and our Moms on the Grow Bible Study. Here are some of the upcoming ways you can connect with Kingwood Methodist. Today's announcements can also be found in a digital bulletin along with links to register for events. Our annual Surviving the Holidays seminar, designed by the creators of the Grief Share program, will be held on Monday, November 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. in rooms E200 to a 1. This one-night seminar is for those who have lost a loved one to help prepare you as you face the holiday season. It is led by people who understand what you're going through and want to help during this very challenging time of the year. If you or someone you know would like to attend this event, please register at griefshare.org slash holidays or contact me at the church office. The Society of St. Stephen is excited to host their annual Christmas Angels event. Tables will be set up in the Commons and, and in the Vine on Sundays, now through November 19th. Sponsors will receive a special angel tag with the child's name, age, and some gift ideas. We want to express our sincere thanks for helping us bring joy to children during this Christmas season. Purchase a poinsettia grown by the Brookwood community in honor or memory of your loved ones to be placed in our worship spaces this Advent season. Plants are available to purchase online only for $12 at kingwoodmethodist.org slash flowers beginning today, Sunday, November 5th. Our ministry work and events are possible thanks to your generous giving. If you're interested in online giving, please visit kingwoodmethodist.org slash give. Thank you for worshiping with us. If you'd like more information on how to get connected, please stop by the welcome desk in the commons or visit us online at kingwoodmethodist.org. Another hearty welcome to you this morning for those of you worshiping in this space and those of you worshiping with us online. It's a great opportunity in this space to fill out the uh, connect card. This lets us know that you were in worship with us today. There's also a space on the back for prayer concerns if you list that out. If there's something that's going to happen today or tomorrow, you'd hand that to me personally so that we can be aware of it. And if it's anything confidential, you can simply write confidential. You can place these in the offering plate when they come by. If you're not getting the weekly church email and you would like to have that information, it means we may not have your email correct. If you'll write as legibly as possible, and we will update your email, you might star that to say, check my email. We'll greatly appreciate that. There'll be a place later in the service where you're going to be invited to greet each other, but we're going to move into this day of All Saints celebration as we welcome the light of Christ into this place and prepare our hearts to worship God together.
As we gather this day, we remember the great ancestors of our faith, from Abraham and Sarah to Paul and Phoebe. We remember the prophets and priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. Teachers of the faith, we remember you. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. Family of our faith, we remember you. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, and parents whose lives ended too soon. Even though words fail, we can still worship. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we gather to remember and to praise. For all the saints, hallelujah, amen. Congregation may be seated. We have an opportunity this morning to consecrate a new altar cloth and pulpit cloth. These are called pyramids. The symbol on the pyramid is the ancient symbol known as the Cairo. You will notice that also on my stole. It's the first two letters in Greek for the word Christ. And so this is known as the Constantinian Cairo. It's the oldest part of the symbol of the faith. There is a group that meets on Friday mornings, and men, if you have time and you don't have a group to meet with, we'd love to see you at accepting his promises. There's a group that starts at, my group starts at 6.30, and I get here at 6.40. Um, <laughs> there's a group that starts earlier than that. Do y'all, who, who's in that early, early group? Woody, Woody is, and yes. it's like 6 o'clock, right? Okay, so before God gets up, if that's you, come on up. So... <laughs> It's a group of men that gather. What they basically do is they walk along together and they ask those historic Wesleyan questions. How is it with your soul? How is your walk with Christ? And then they study a uh, portion of Scripture. Right now we're working through the book of Job, which has spurned many a fascinating conversation. Gary Showalter was a part of this congregation for a number of years. For those of you who are guests and do not understand the significance, Gary was a choir director here for a number of years. Gary was the go-to guy. Whenever our former associate pastor, Chris Harrison, wanted to dress up as something crazy, Gary Showalter would always join in. And when Chris and Gary were together, you never knew what was going to be coming. But you knew it was going to be special. Gary helped out in all kinds of places. He was significant in the school for little children. He wrote songs for them and played their guitar. You see any of our children, you can say Joshua 1-9 and the kids will start singing. Gary died tragically and suddenly this past year. We remember in the All Saints... 
He's also a significant part of accepting his promises, otherwise known as AHP. And so AHP, in his honor, uh, has asked and has donated the pyramids today. They'll be consecrated this day by AHP. Here's the beautiful thing. Pastors don't have to be the only ones that consecrate. In our Protestant history, there is something known as the priesthood of all believers. It's one of the bedrocks, believing that we each have a priestly type function, not just for the clergy, but for each other to say, how is it with your soul and to lead the church? So the AHP group will be actually doing the formal consecration of the pyramids this day. So I'm going to ask which one of our AHP, whoever our AHP leader is that's going to be leading that section, if you'll follow me to the pulpit. And you as a congregation know that you will also have a section and the liturgy will be on the screen. And guys, I'll direct you at the appropriate moment to come forward to lay hands on the cloth. So we'll move to the liturgy and then when it comes time for the consecration, you all will move up to place your hands on the cloth itself. Loving and gracious God, all honor and glory is yours. Amen. Whether it be a Sunday worship, a funeral, a wedding, or prayer service, pyramids have been lovingly and carefully placed on the altar and pulpit of this sanctuary throughout the years. They mark the passing of the seasons of the Christian calendar. They've helped us to remember that we are standing on the shoulders of and are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses who have kept the faith alive. We th thank you, God, for the efforts and dedication of those who work to prepare this sanctuary for worship. We pray a blessing on each paramount. May they remind us upon which the rich history and tradition Kingwood Methodist Church has been built. On this All Saints Day, we pause to remember, especially today we remember our dear friend and colleague, Gary Showalter. He was a musician, a church staff member, a choir member, a prayer warrior, a husband, a father, and our dearest friend. These pyramids are presented to be consecrated and commissioned for Kingwood Methodist Church in his memory and in his honor to the glory of God. We give thanks for Gary's prayer group. Uh, it's, it's called Accepting His Promises, AHP. And they are the ones who have given these pyramids. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these pyramids to the glory of God, inspired by our friend Gary, who now resides with you. Gentlemen, if you will all move forward and place your hand either on the cloth or behind it. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, grant us your blessing as we consecrate this gift of pyramids to your glory. That like Gary, they be an enduring witness before all of your people. And that our lives may be consecrated to your service. We pray this in the name of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Come to this time of prayer, some things that we want to celebrate um, are Kairos number 26 is at Hightower. A number of our men are there wrapping up today as the love of Christ has been taken into that unit. Our youth are returning from fall retreat and they'll be worshiping at town center this morning. So keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Also, I want to let you know that we, um, we have one of our own, Annette Lynch, who has authored a book that's now come out called The Drink That Changed Everything. You may have seen us use the phrase a lot of times, Oasis. It came from an encounter. If you'd like to be uh, a copy, get a copy of this book, 
You can talk to Nanette. She's upstairs. Rick, this is your copy, but is a cheap sort of a, I'm going to leave it at the altar. You got to come forward to get it later. So that's one way to get the pre the congregation to come forward. But thank you, Nanette, for giving language to what God has done in your heart and what God has done through this ministry that has changed so many lives. We thank God for you. People that we need to keep in our thoughts and prayers that have either faced procedures are in the healing process or are going to be facing procedures. Carolyn Baldwin, Ani Sher's mother, Margaret, George Ann Ironman, Richard Mantler, who is Karen Salisa's father, James Urbis, Larry Wilkins, Marilyn Evans, Bubba Kubion, who's sitting right back here. I saw you, Bubba. Had your next surgery. I know you can't move much, but I see you, brother. Larry Wilkins, Fred Uttenweiler, Susan Ward, and Cindy Worsham. May God pour his blessings upon all this as Sam comes to lead us in this time of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us to be your people. We thank you for all of those who have helped us on our journey and encouraged us to keep believing when we felt like giving up. We pray for your church on earth, that it remain faithful to the apostles' teaching and that its various communities will continue to love each other. We pray for those who are not yet a part of your church and for those who have left it, that they may find your love of them in Christ. Bring peace to those countries in conflict. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Israel, and the peace of all nations. And we pray for your blessings on all of your people. Amen. Hello, I'm Clint Wiley, Associate Pastor. And if you've seen the news at all over the last month, you've witnessed a horrific tragedy in the Israeli-Hamas conflict. As Christians, our greatest weapon from afar is prayer. And the prayer that's been on our hearts as a staff and as a missions committee is that God would bring people of peace to provide aid for those innocent women, children, and families caught in the middle of this war. For our November monthly mission opportunity, we'll be focused on the crisis in Israel and Gaza. Much like the Ukrainian invasion, there's a, a great need for supplies and humanitarian aid, especially for those fleeing the area and the most vulnerable people groups, like the widows, the orphans, and the children. Currently, the missions committee is vetting organizations to determine how we can best be stewards of the church's generosity. Join us in prayer for these innocent lives that are made in the image of God as we raise support this month. Would you pray also that God would use these funds to bring hope and relief to those amidst this tragedy? The MMO, or the Monthly Mission Opportunity, is an offering separate from the general missions budget. Our goal is that you not only give, but you get plugged into these opportunities. Any money that you leave on the altar on the first Sundays will go toward that month's mission. For more information or to get plugged in, stop by the MMO wall in the comments or visit us at kingwoodmethodist.org slash missions. Many of you have inquired about our scheduled trip to, um, to the Holy Land. It doesn't look like it's going to make and our hearts and prayers are with many I've talked to my contacts there. Uh, there is still peace prevailing in Nazareth and in Bethlehem and much of Jerusalem. We pray for the uh, people of Israel as they have responded and for all the innocent victims in Palestine to the horrors uh, and atrocities perpetrated by Hamas. May God move their hearts. That's what our prayer is, right? That 
they would see each other as brothers and sisters. As we come to this time, we invite our ushers to come forward for our offering, and it's an opportunity to also remind you that this is our Consecration Sunday, a time when we invite everyone to turn in their pledge cards, their estimate of giving card uh, for the coming year to so financially support the life of the church. If you didn't get a packet or get one in the mail, there's one in the pew back in front of you. Ask if you'll prayerfully consider what God is leading you to help us be the image of Christ in this area. During this anthem by the choir, which is absolutely magnificent, uh, Matt will turn and invite you into one verse of what is being sung. May God add his blessing to the giving that you do for the image of Christ.
continue in the spirit of prayer, let us join together remembering that Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love Him, who innocently repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law. We have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to a moment of silent confession and prayer. To the world that is broken in darkness, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. And for every part of your own life where you have felt broken, hear this good news, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. Take his yoke upon you, for it is light. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people to one another in God, I invite you to stand now and greet your neighbor in the name of Christ who welcomes us all to this place. I invite the congregation to remain standing for the reading of the scripture this day for our thoughts. These words from Paul to the church at Colossae, Colossians chapter 1, and we'll be reading verses 3 through 12. Hear now the good news. Paul says this, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learn from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the spirit for this reason since the day we heard about you we have not stopped praying for you we continually ask god to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work growing in the knowledge of god being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of the light. This is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and as you are, let's pray together. Eternal God, show us your word and your covenant that is in your word, your grace that is in your covenant, your goodness within your grace and your love and your goodness and yourself within your love. And may your spirit stand between me and your people so the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together would be shaped, formed, and molded into the good news of the gospel of Christ in whose name we gather, in whose name we pray, and in whose name we will depart and seek to serve faithfully. And all of God's people did say, Amen. All Saints Sunday each year is an emotional time for me. 
It's an emotional time for me because as I age each year, I realize that in my age, there are fewer years in front of me than there are behind me. And with each year, the great testimony and witness of those who have poured their lives into me, I feel such a a thankfulness, but there's a twinge that's woven in of guilt that I wish I had remembered how sacred it was at the time it was given to me. I was young, I was naive, I was overlooking, I took things for granted, and yet with each passing year, things that are pictures, things like this stole that my father gave to me that he purchased at St. Peter Galacantu, uh, the place where Peter denied Jesus. There's a beautiful basilica there. There is a group and order of nuns that make these. I was able to purchase one when he was with me in 2010, but this is his. And on this day when I wear this stole, and every time I wear it, I feel as though I'm draping the presence of my father around me, and there's a sacredness to it. I dig through my cufflinks this morning because I've got a pair of his old cufflinks on. Even my tie bears witness to the witness of those around me, and I must show you it because every Sunday, Jim Williamson, we used to tease each other and say, that's a great looking tie. And I said to Jim one day, man, that's a great looking tie. And on the way out, he took it off and handed it to me. And within a year, unbeknownst to us both, Barbara, we were celebrating Jim's life. I don't just dawn these things to remind me, but every picture. Every memory becomes a sacred encouragement. And and Paul is writing the church at Colossae. And did you pick up the way in which he pointed so clearly that it's in their memory. It's in what God has done. It's in the midst of what God is doing that there's a thankfulness that's woven in the midst of the challenge. Paul's writing to the church at Colossae. He's saying basically, don't forget who you are. Don't forget whose you are. Whenever I was in high school leaving uh, the house. Now, there's two things you need to know about my mother. I've told you before. Uh, The first is she's a force with which to be reckoned. Force of nature, right? She asked me once what that meant. And I said, everybody else understands it, Mom. You don't have to. (laughs) She was emergency supervising room nurse. She took a Polaroid picture of the first truck that I drove, a 1976 GMC pickup with glass packs at a 454. I thought I was the coolest thing because I had a truck that could rumble. I was so stupid. Do you know how hard it is to sneak in late with a truck with glass packs? My mom was smarter than me even then, and she still is. And she would always say to me the words, remember who you are when I left. And then she said this. She said, remember, you cannot be replaced. And I took that for granted for so many years. I just knew it was part of what was said. Is if, and sometimes we say to others, love you. I love you. And yet during times of difficulty or times of sacredness, those three words have a deeper, more penetrating meaning. And don't forget, church, to each one of you, God says you cannot be replaced. In the context of the great Thanksgiving, we will name those individuals who are members of this church who who died in this past year, and it is as if we are saying through in a liturgical embrace and celebration mixed with grief and joy altogether, we have not forgotten and you cannot be replaced. Others may come along, but you cannot be replaced. Your contribution to each of our lives, your contribution to the body of Christ will have an indelible legacy. And when I read through these names, I have a twinge of laughter, some of whom tease me about my ostrich boots that I wore each week. Some saying I spent a little bit of time in Amarillo, or I have a friend who lives in McKinney where your mom is, or I've got family in Wisconsin where your mom came from. This woven relationship that we have. But when we speak of all saints, here's a couple things that I think are important for us to remember. The first is this context of really celebrating a all saints isn't just restricted to those who have been beautified by the church. When we look historically, we can go back as early as the mid-300s, and we find that Ephraim of Sirius was actually commemorating a feast of martyrs, a feast of remembering those who had died in the faith. We believe this is the bedrock for 400 years of carrying forth tradition 
that then in the mid-700s, All Saints Day was declared. But even then, it was more traditionally preserved for those who've been beautified, those who've been lifted to the place of sainthood. But in the last decades, in basically the last century, we've realized that ever since the 1500s, the Protestant Reformation, this sense of being a saint is, re- is not restricted to the sort of obscure, unique opportunities. It's any place and anywhere one has been faithfully following Christ. You see, you're the saints. We read in Ephesians that the work of the Holy Spirit is for the building up of the saints for the work of the kingdom of God. We're all saints in progress. And the church exists not to be a warehouse for the perfect, but a factory for the broken. A place in which we are formed and shaped into what God is wanting to do in and through our lives. One of the treasures that I have is uh, boxes and memories of my grandfather and father's writings. And in, in one of his books that he went to time and again, he's got these little marked in penciled marks whenever he would use a poem or something. There's a poem that he had marked by Bayard Taylor. It's entitled Nameless Saints. The healing of this world is in its nameless saints. Each separate star means nothing, but a myriad of scattered stars break up the night and make it beautiful. A myriad of stars break up the night and make it beautiful. We come to this place. We come to this time of worship. We set this day aside to remember that great is God's faithfulness. And that morning by morning, new mercies we see. That the writer of Hebrews meant what he said. That we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses that we should run with perseverance the race that is set before each of us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. That while these saints, these people whom we love, may be beyond our physical embrace, they are a perpetual presence in our hearts and in our lives. Every photo, every card, every memory enlivens in us the reality that as people of faith, we truly are a part of the great communion of the saints. I love the imagery of the communion of the saints and oftentimes when I will do memorial services and we come to the time of the obituary, we'll talk about those who had preceded them in death. And I I love giving that language a bit different feel. Imagine that if we do believe in the communion of saints, which I do fully, that whatever the transition looks like when you close your eyes to this life and you step into the great communion of saints, you're going to see familiar faces. People who have finished the course of their faith, who've run with perseverance the race that's set before them. Or as Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, people who have fought the good fight, who've kept the faith, who've finished the race. We're not done running yet. But may God use each of our lives and may we be inspired in this moment, in this day, to remember those who have faithfully lived and died in the faith. Most every funeral that I do, I end with this benediction that comes from the hand of my grandfather. It's been used thousands of times. My grandfather used it, my father used it. May God bless the sacred ties that bind us to the unseen world where God has gathered his children for their eternal rest. May the memory of those who have lived faithfully and died in the faith encompass us now, making the distant heavens a home to our hearts. This is the good news. Billy Lund in Nocona, Texas was so right when she looked at me in the eye and she said, Preacher, you aren't doing my funeral. And I thought, well, there's been a lot of preachers come through Nocona. Which one did you like better than me? She said, no. You're going to officiate my graduation ceremony to heaven. Don't you love that imagery? Oh, friends, we come. We come to acknowledge that These that we celebrate are beyond our embrace physically, but are perpetual presence with us always. Because the grace, the transcendent truth and power of God, and that place that Revelation calls that new Jerusalem, a place where there will be no more tear, 
and only laughter and joy. May God bless our memories and may we collectively live in the place both of the sadness of physical loss and the joy and certainty that those whom we remember are with us now and we shall see them again. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. In the midst of this great thanksgiving over communion, because there is specific language which speaks to the great communion of the saints, we will remember those individuals during the reading of the names in the midst of the liturgy. You will see a video on the screen that will have a picture that's been submitted by a family and also the name of that individual that's listed. When that name comes up, you can just silently or out loud speak the word amen. Let's say that together. Amen. That's the way that you in that moment say, this person is one that I had a connection with. You'll know at the appropriate time because you will see their names there. Friends, let's gather ourselves around these words of the great Thanksgiving, celebrating God's faithfulness. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Power and might. Glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. In the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples as he gives to you and me this day. He says, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples as he gives to you and me this day. And he says, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom now we name before you. Carolyn Bolding. Bob Braun. Janelle Brink. Sherry Chumley. Joe Bob Crowley. Sue Duggan. Christopher Fuller. Jim Johnston. Brad Kirkendall. Steve Mulliken. Joe Noakes. Melanie Nolan. Tim Pritchard. 
Spencer Centers. Gary Showalter. Amen. Nell Stinson. And we remember our friends and extended family that have passed in this past year. And we remember all those who have finished the course of their faith in years past that are the great communion of the saints. So friends, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses that strengthens us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, let us acknowledge that God's Spirit makes us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of being the children of God, let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we, many as we are, are one in Christ. And when we share in the breaking of the bread, is it not a means of sharing in the body of Christ and the bread of life? In the cup over which we give thanks, is it not a means of sharing in the cup of forgiveness poured out for all. This is not a Methodist communion table. This is the Lord's communion table. All who are present are welcome to come and receive. Communion will be by intention. We first are going to have some servers come forward to receive communion. They will be placed at four stations. You would come as a congregation at the direction of the ushers. As you come forward, you extend your hand. You break a portion of the bread you dip it into the chalice and then consume the elements. You can either kneel at the altar rail if you desire, or you can return to your seat. There are also some gluten-free elements over to my right, and then Matt will be over that direction as well if you need the all-in-one gluten-free. But because it's God who set this table and prepared this feast and says, you cannot be replaced, let us come with thanks-filled hearts to this table to receive what God offers in this sacrament of Holy Communion. For those of you who will be assisting at the stations, if you would please come now to receive.
Let's pray together. God, thank you for this holy meal. Thank you for this day of worship where in our grief you meet us with joy and laughter and a God who transformed tears of sadness into tears of thanks-filled remembrance. As we go from this place, help us so to live that we fix our eyes on Jesus and the world would know he lives within our hearts. And this we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. The most important thing to us at Kingwood Methodist Church is that you're an active disciple of Christ growing in your faith. If you don't have a church home, any of us as pastors would love to sit and visit with you to know your story, to know your walk with Christ. Uh, we've got families joining in the vine this morning. We had families join last week here at the 11. We're just delighted the way that you're responding to be the hands and heart of Christ. Uh, today at 9.30, uh, see my... At 11 o'clock, we have the Next Steps meeting after this. At 11 o'clock, Next Steps. If you've ever wondered how to negotiate our campus, Next Steps is a tour of the campus. You ever wonder where G building is or K building is or the Vine space? Uh, that's an opportunity to find out how to find out where everything is on the campus. Then also, after the 11 o'clock service, we'll be having pizza and pastors. I told Clint, Clint ordered barbecue chicken pizza. I said, no, 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 those are two different thoughts, pizza and barbecue chicken. So That's, for, that's a Missouri thing, right? That's a, it must be a Missouri. Missouri. must be a Kansas yeah, City Mahomes Kansas thing for City. sure, right, yeah. Right. Friends, no one's life was changed because we came to church. But remember, the doors open to welcome you in, and they open to send you out, and the whole face of the world can be changed if you and I will be the body of Christ in the world. We're going to stand together now and joining two verses of the hymn, O Church of God United, let us stand and join our faith in song. that this service is one that others will want to see. We had an internet hiccup uh, on the, at a certain point in here. So I advise by our tech guys that we'll post that video up of today's service a little bit later today. But we do have it. They recorded it. It just, we stopped the stream at one point for some internet issues. Things work until they don't. So that's the way it is. Amen. Amen. Uh, thanks be to God. Thanks for um, being fleet on feet uh, and for the way that you all in technology are so vital to this worship experience. Friends, Paul said in one place that you are like stars that shine in the darkness of the night. The poet said that you're the one who are like scattered across the sky in the midst of the darkness and you make an impact because you collectively go. So go preach the gospel to everybody that you meet and may God's spirit help you discern when you need to add words to that witness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, every person is sent because you cannot be replaced. Amen. Amen. Sure. 
Oh,